Hey guys, so I am back. I am done with finals. I have moved back home and I am so ready to start my summer vacation. But I know for a lot of you guys, you are spending the summer getting ready to start your freshman year at college. So exciting. So today I'm going to tell you about UC Davis's orientation and what you can expect from that. Now I am not an orientation leader. I do not have the exact schedule. And I went to the College of BioSci um, orientation. But I went through the process like I did it, so I think I can give you a good gist, kind of, of what it's about. And also, if you go to a different school that's not UC Davis, um, I'm sure they teach all the same things at orientation. So, yeah, this video should give you a little bit of an idea of what to expect. First off, what to bring. Um, they should tell you whether you need to bring, like, pillows or like what kind of clothes or anything. Um, mine was, started in the morning, went all day, we stayed overnight in the dorms, and then we went the next day until 3, and then we went home. Um, so we didn't need to bring any bedding, they provided it, but I would recommend bringing a blanket, because the blanket they provide you is like super thin, um, not very warm, so go ahead and just bring a blanket and a pillow if you can. Also they say to bring either your laptop, a tablet, or a smartphone. I personally would recommend bringing all three if you have the option. Um, you are using this to look up different classes and try to make class schedule, get used to the catalog and all of that. So you want your laptop definitely at night when you're actually making your schedule, but it's nice to just have your tablet to carry around when you're actually going through the classes and the lectures that are teaching you how to use the programs. And then, yeah, your phone, if you have a tablet, a smartphone would be great too. Um, just for class, but definitely bring your laptop, even if you just leave it in your dorm at night, or leave it in your dorm and just use it at night, because it is really, really helpful. Also, I would say bring snacks. Um, they do feed you, you get to eat in the dining hall, but I know my group, there were like, two, you're split into two groups since there are so many kids at orientation, um, and my group was the early dinner, so I think we ate dinner at like 4 o'clock or 5 o'clock. And then you're doing activities until 11 o'clock at night, and then you're going to be up past your activities, you know? So you still have a ton of hours after you eat dinner um, to, like, when you're going to bed. So definitely bring snacks for your dorm room. Um, don't really worry about being healthy. It's one night, so just cheese it camp food, whatever. Also, bring a jacket just in case. Like, Davis, NorCal, it gets pretty dang hot here in the summer, but... When you're walking around campus at 11 o'clock at night, sometimes it gets a little bit windy, it's a little bit chilly, so bring a jacket just in case. So now the actual orientation experience, what it's like. So like I said, um, it started at about 7 a.m. one morning and went till 3 p.m. the next day. So basically, me and my mom went and there's a separate like parent, parent orientation. So we went, um, I took all my stuff, you check in, uh, you get your dorm room key, you go up, find dorms, put your stuff away, and then you go and find your orientation leader. And how it's split up is by major. Um, I think they actually have several groups per major. Yeah, they'll tell you your person's name and like, I think they have a number too. So like mine was like Susanna 14 or something like that, and it was for NPB majors, which is Neurobiology, Physiology, and Behavior, and which I am currently trying to switch out of. So, yeah. anyway, so you go and find your leader, and then they group up with another person, and you go into one of the lounges in the dorms, and they just kind of introduce themselves and tell you a little bit about what's going to be going on at orientation. They give you these booklets, um, my first year as an Aggie, and it has, um, it, it shows you, like, the general ed requirements, and there's a bunch of different charts that you fill out um, during orientation, during, and during um, the different like workshops that they take you to. So yeah, first you just guys know your orientation leader and kind of people in your group. Next, you will go to SciLec, um, also known as like, it's like science lecture hall one, two, three or something, but everyone calls it SciLec. Um, and this seats about 600 kids and at my orientation it was full. Um, I know my roommate, she went to Letters and Sciences orientation, and they used a different hall that's like half the size, 
So I think it just depends on how many kids are there. You go in, and then for orientation leaders do skits about like moving into the dorms, also while like explaining the different rules to you and stuff. Basically just like don't get drunk and I don't know, stuff like that. Um, but yeah, so they do different skits. And then I remember this one guy came in and talked to us. Um, he's some important guy, I don't remember who. But all I remember is he said, go to class, go to class, go to class. He said it like 20 times throughout his speech. And he even said, if you get one thing from you know me talking to you, I want it to be go to class. So yeah, they really stress like going to class and all that. So then throughout the day, you do different work workshops, I guess. You go to like Silec and um, and in one of them, they talk to us about like scholarships, I think. One of them, they taught us how to use Schedule Builder, which is the website that you will be using to use your, to build your schedule um, throughout your four years at Davis. Now, they take you through it step by step. They teach you how to log in, how to use it, and all of that. Um, and yeah, it's a great program. My roommate and I are on it all the time. Um, this is how you can search for classes. You can even search specifically for like, okay, I need a social sciences, GE, and I need it between this time and this time, and you know, only open sleep, open seats, only lower division. You have like all these different things you can mess with to find um, the classes you need. And you can also build different schedules, which is nice because when you're a freshman, you have different class times, which is like the time you can sign up for classes. And it's last since you're a freshman. Um, and so sometimes the classes you want are filled. So it's nice to have other schedules um, so you can like just change your schedule easily. So I just talked about GEs. They completely explain that whole process to you. They are really great about explaining um, what the GEs mean, how to read the GE chart that I just showed you a second ago. Um, they give you tips on what classes to take your first quarter. They give you tips on what classes not to take the first quarter. And okay, for the most part, I guess trust your orientation leaders, but don't trust them 100%. Um, because mine didn't really know what she was talking about. Um, yeah, so I think for the most part, if you just take regular GE classes, you should be fine. But I think especially since I went to the bio sci um, orientation, yet yeah, I'm a psychology major and have wanted to do that the whole time, um, they didn't really quite know what classes I needed to take. And then since I did go to the bio sci um, orientation, only the bio sci classes were like had open seats because they like it's kind of complicated but like since there are several orientations at different times they only open up a certain amount of seats per orientation so when you want to get a class it kind of depends on like um it depends on what order in your group you get to sign up for classes i was last so almost all of the classes were filled i just had to sign up for things and then i completely changed them past two so that's another thing when you're at orientation the second day, you actually sign up for classes, which is crazy. Um, so, you know, you've been going to a couple um, lectures telling you what classes you might want to take. Um, you go to this one where they actually tell you, like, what every single bio sci major is and, like, what classes you need to take and all this stuff. It, I'm sure it was interesting for bio sci majors, but it was so boring to me. Like, yeah, like I said, I don't like science, I want to be a psych major, and so listening about plant biology and, I don't know, microbiology and the vi virology, all that stuff, not interesting to me, but if that int is interesting to you, then you will love orientation. Anyway, keep in mind that the classes that you sign up with your orientation leader, you can completely change later on. I mean, if you have classes that you want to sign up for and you need, Go ahead and try to do that out orientation, but if you don't get a certain class, it's not the end of the world. Um, I was freaking out because I had to sign up for, I believe it was COM 4, Comparative Literature 4, and it was like fantasy and the supernatural. And it fulfilled the writing requirement, but it wasn't the writing class that I wanted to take. Um, but luckily, during past two, I was able to switch that out for Psych 1, and I had an amazing professor, Thompson. Get Thompson, um, if you're taking Psych 1, he is an amazing professor. He makes it so interesting. Yeah, I love that class. 
I am so glad that I didn't have to stick with that comparative literature class because it ended up um, one of my um, friends was in it and basically they watched horror movies and like wrote short papers about that. Okay, I hate horror movies and I seriously would have been scarred for life if like one, I had just gone off to college and then two, had to watch all these horror movies. No. So it's a really good thing I wasn't in it. Um, if you're interested in that, again, it's COM4, Comparative Literature 4, Fantasy and Supernatural. Um, my friend seemed to have just a fine time in it. Um, she and her roommate took it, so they would just have movie nights. But they had seen all those horror movies before. Yeah, I would have been scarred for life. Probably would have had to come home um, like a month into school if I had to watch horror movies for my homework. Also, orientation is not just all about classes. They want you to meet different people. So they have a ton of like icebreaker games and like they do schedule some time for you to just kind of like socialize. Um, also, the first night, like I mentioned, you're out till like 11 o'clock at night. Um, that's because they open up the arc, which is like the gym and um, where the basketball courts are. They have all the different sports clubs or like club sports. Um, and intramurals and stuff and like sororities, all those people, they have a booth set up so you can go and get information for it and you can get like, you can sign up for the email list, whatever. So that's where I signed up um, to information on like sorority recruitment, um, also for gymnastics club. I might have signed up to get information for volleyball or club volleyball as well and all that stuff. And you can go play volleyball, play basketball if you want to while you're there. But if you stay till like 11 o'clock at night, you got a free t-shirt and free food and again it was four o'clock when I had dinner so I was like starving by this point point. and yeah college is so great because especially the first year there are so many events for freshmen and they give out so many free shirts I have I have so many free shirts from this year it is amazing probably one of my favorite things getting free stuff even though you pay so much in tuition it's not really free but it seems free so yeah that's fantastic so yeah, living in the dorms for a night was fine. It was in Tercero. Um, I was in a triple, and it honestly doesn't matter if you're in a double or triple or whatever for orientation because you only, like, you literally only have to sleep in the same room as these people, and then you never see them again. Um, I have not seen anybody from my orientation um, since I started school, and yeah, that could be because I switched majors. Also, it is such a big campus, like. If you can, totally make friends and stay in contact and stuff, um, but for the most part, most part, you probably won't see these people again. Um, but I will say, if you do know someone who has like the same major as you, um, like before you start, like before you even go to Davis, try to sign up for the same orientation. Um, I didn't know anybody, I still, like before I started, I didn't know anybody going to Davis for my school at all or from like my community so that was kind of hard not knowing anybody when like you know one of my friends her best friend from home is her roommate or you know like all these things like all these girls like their best friends from home are their roommate or like they know people orientation even if they're not best friends they know each other so they can hang out with each other and not be like completely 100% awkward so yeah if you know people like do try to sign up for the same one but if you don't it's not the end of the world everyone like, most people there don't know anybody. You're all just trying to make friends. You all have, like, an open mind, just trying the whole college thing. You just want to be friendly. And so, yeah, it's not too hard to make friends at orientation, so don't really worry about that. And so, yeah, that's basically what orientation is. You basically just go from, like, lecture hall to lecture hall, and they tell you about the different majors in your college, for example, like College of Letters and Sciences or College of Biosci, um, tell you about that, tell you about what classes you need to take, they explain the GE requirements, they explain um, schedule builder, how to make your schedule, you actually build your schedule, um, you meet with your orientation leader, and they will suggest certain classes to take or help you mold your schedule, and then you actually sign up for classes. So yeah, it's a great experience. Um, I personally didn't love orientation. I don't know if it was because I didn't know what it was going to be like beforehand. Because um, there are seriously no YouTube videos on this. I looked. There's none. So you're welcome. Um, but yeah, like, I don't know if it's because I didn't know it was going to happen or because I didn't know anybody or because it was like 
so darn hot or because like I don't care about biological sciences whatsoever so yeah I didn't love it it was fine though it was good to experience like the dorms and um, being in the lecture halls for the first time that was nice starting to get a sense of the campus not really because you stay in Tercero and Silek the entire time but yeah I know some kids like went downtown and explored campus um, for an orientation I don't know when they had time for that um, but yeah and then they do have like fun things to do too yeah it's an experience so yeah I definitely recommend it if you can go you definitely learn a lot um, it's nice to be on your campus like before school actually starts so you can start getting a feel for it so yeah if you guys have any questions about orientation feel free to comment them below if you liked this video, want to see more like that, hit the thumbs up button, hit the like button. Um, also go ahead and subscribe. And like I said, I just got done with finals and I just moved back home. So I'm going to start like making more videos and um, my sister's going to help me make some and my friends as well. I have tons of ideas. If you have any specific ones you want to see, go ahead and comment that below too. And yeah, I hope you guys have an awesome summer. Bye!